Holy Gospel according to John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rite of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the wine, that, the water that had become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace be with you all through Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. Well, once again, I am Pastor Dione Stepanek, and I serve as the assistant to the bishop and the director for evangelical mission here in the La Crosse Area Synod, uh, a synod that I'm getting uh, quite accustomed to by driving all over God's beautiful creation here and saying, I've been to that quick trip and that quick trip and that quick trip um, and, uh, and that church and that church and really finding my way around. Uh, but I do serve on behalf of the wider church here, and so this morning I bring greetings on behalf of Bishop Felix Malpica and the 72 other congregations that make up the La Crosse Area Synod, congregations that you are in relationship and partnership with as members of this synod and of the wider ELCA and really the church throughout the world. Congregations that, much like you, often may find yourselves asking questions that feel awfully similar to the questions raised in our gospel reading today. What are we supposed to do when the wine runs out? The story from the Gospel of John is one that sticks out in our minds. Right? Jesus is at a party, a wedding celebration to be exact, celebrating the joining of two families, enjoying the festivities, laughing, people watching, and conversing. And before we get to that miraculous part of the story where Jesus first begins his ministry of taking every ordinary day things and making them into something that point beyond themselves, we can't miss the fact that Jesus here is enjoying life together in community by doing the kinds of things that we all do from time to time, right? He goes to a wedding. He knows what fun is. He knows the importance of celebration and relationships. He knows the power of deeply held traditions and how they can bring particular meaning to people's lives, to this couple's life, and the family and friends that surround them at this important time. Jesus, it appears, enjoys a good party and appreciates all that goes into it. Now, if you think that it takes a lot to plan for weddings these days, and it does, in Jesus' time and culture, the wedding festivities lasted an entire week. So talk about something that is hard to plan for. A lot a lot goes into planning for a week-long party. And it seems that Jesus also understands the magnitude of the profound disappointment that happens when something makes it all fall apart, all that hard work and anticipation. But as we all know from weddings that we've been to or weddings that we've been a part of or parties that we've hosted, or more broadly— as we know from life as a whole itself, 
Sometimes the wine, the stuff that we assumed would last as long as we hoped, runs out. And we're left wondering, well, what now? What now? What are we supposed to do when our pews aren't as full as they used to be back in the day? What are we supposed to do when COVID impacts linger on? Partisan divides seem to get deeper and deeper, and our communities continue to age as younger people grow up and move away. What should we do when the proverbial wine runs out? How do we keep the party going? They're hard questions to ask when you're in the middle of it all. As the party or the world around us keeps rolling forward and we're wondering if we can keep up to meet the challenges of the day. Here in this story, though, we get a reminder that we know who to go to when those things run out. Jesus' mother knew for sure. It doesn't seem that anyone else has quite caught wind of the fact that something is awry yet, though. But she has heard the servants whispering with increasing worry. The wine is gone. No, no, we've got more in back. No, we don't. I checked. What's out there now is all we have, and it's going to run out soon. Jesus' mom knows that Jesus can do something about this, something to help the party continue to save these hosts from shame. Jesus, she says, they've run out of wine. And Jesus reply, okay, but what does that have to do with you and me? Well, she doesn't explain it any more than that, but she also doesn't back down. Jesus can help. She knows it, and she expects it. So she tells the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, Jesus might have told them to run down the road and pick up some more wine, I suppose. You know, maybe he knew some winemakers who could give him a good deal on the cheap stuff in a pinch. But that's not Jesus' way. He's going to use this time to do something to show the nature of God's abundance. An abundance that's different, that surprises us. Even though he had told his mother that this really wasn't his concern and it wasn't his time, he seems to be moved by the audacity of her insistence and belief that he could help. And he does. Often, when we're faced with calamity or disappointment, when things that we thought we had figured out don't meet the needs of the day, we often forget that Jesus is in our midst, with us there in the middle of the party or the pain or the daily events of our lives. We often forget Yes, even in the church, that we can ask and trust Jesus can and will do something, can and will show up. But often, often, we try to muscle and reason our way through things on our own or pretend that we don't have a problem at all, thinking that maybe we can just keep diluting the little bit that we have and no one will realize that we're lacking at all. We do this all while Jesus is standing in our midst, ready for someone to say, hey, Jesus, it's your time. Show up, do your thing. We're in over our heads and we can't do it alone. The thing about asking, demanding that Jesus even show up, though, is that then we have to be willing to do what he says, even if it seems a bit ridiculous. In this story, they're short of wine, and Jesus is telling the servants to go get a huge amount of water. You can kind of imagine the folks exchanging glances like, he knows that we're out of wine, not water, right? 
But rather than fighting it, they go along with this strange request that's actually going to take quite a bit of backbreaking work to accomplish. See, carrying huge basins of water isn't an easy endeavor. They, they don't have indoor plumbing to fill it up. This is strenuous work that takes a lot of effort, all for something that they don't actually know or have any indication is going to change anything. But they do it, trusting that somehow it'll do something. It can be scary to ask Jesus to do those things, though, because Jesus' way forward almost always asks something of us. And when we don't know exactly what will be asked, we can hesitate to ask at all. What if it's hard? What if it doesn't work? What if it isn't exactly what we had expected or what we had hoped ourselves when we started out? Or what if we're surprised by something better than we even asked for? What if we trust that Jesus actually brings new life to situations that we assumed were all but over? What if we took Jesus' mother's instruction to heart and listened to her guidance? Do whatever he tells you. They carry in all of the water. Then they wait. And miraculously, when the steward shows up, he dips his cup in the basin, and it's wine. Even better than they'd had before. The steward doesn't know where it came from. The host was probably scratching his head, wondering where it came from, too. He didn't remember buying this good stuff. But the servants, the ones who listened to what Jesus told them to do, they knew where it came from, and they knew it wasn't from them. They'd carried water. Now this was wine. They got to participate in something amazing by following Jesus' lead, by doing the hard week work. Again, they know that they carried water, but they saw that Jesus was at work when it became wine. As we live and move and have our being in this world where we run into times in our lives where the wine has run dry, where teachers aren't sure how or where they'll have the energy to get through another day, yet alone another year in an already stressed out classroom, where you know that there's a lot of work to do, but you can't seem to figure out where to start, where each day seems to be filled with heavier and heavier news that may cause you to start feeling like you're walking through molasses. In those days when we feel as if we've run out of what brings life to the party, Jesus sees empty basins in our lives and in our world that hold promise for something new something more, something happily unexpected in the future. It's a risky proposition to ask Jesus to do something to change our situation since it's open-ended. What will Jesus ask of us in response? Do we get to go back to the same suppliers of wine, the same sources of structures and programs of the past that have long since run dry? Or do we try something new? Do we dare ask Jesus to show up knowing that there's some heavy lifting to be done? These are questions that we're asking throughout the Synod. And that you yourselves and neighboring churches here in this area have been in active conversation about recently. Asking, how do we take the next faithful step when we aren't always sure what Jesus is really asking of us? How do we come together so that we can do more together than we can apart for the sake of the mission of God? How do we 
faithfully and boldly trust that Jesus can make something wonderful out of something that we would otherwise leave as ordinary. And then support each other as we wait to dip our cups into those freshly filled basins of water, just waiting to see if there's wine in there yet. As the synod continues to accompany you all in this time and walks alongside you now as we try to catch a glimpse of a fresh mission vision before you, before us all, as we as the synod work together to cultivate life-giving relationships that are rooted in God's love, we are journeying together asking the questions, working to follow Jesus' guidance, trusting with the audacity of Jesus' mother, trusting that we can call on Jesus to do something and then boldly follow his direction to reveal to us something new, something life-giving. Amen. Thank you.